Good morning, everyone. I'll leave this here. I'm going to talk to you today about feathers. Now, I know some of you probably are vegetarian, but the reality is society eats a lot of chicken. What does that mean? There are a lot of feathers out there, millions of tons generated every year. But disposal options are limited. It's basically turned into a low-grade animal feed. But feathers are an amazing natural material, so at Aero Powder, we think they can be used for better. Let's start with another problem then, packaging, specifically polystyrene packaging. We all know it, it keeps stuff cold during transport, but we also know it's terrible for the environment, uh, petroleum-based and, and going into landfill at the end. Here we think feathers have the answer. I'd like to introduce you to our product, Plumo. Plumo is made from waste feathers converted into a textile surrounded by a biodegradable liner. You can therefore put it into cardboard boxes or delivery bags and then put your items inside and it will stay cold during transport and fresh in a more sustainable manner. It is a bit silly to come to Helsinki and talk about keeping things cold. However, it really does work. We've done lab tests to show that its thermal conductivity is down to 0.03, meaning it's standing toe to toe with polystyrene. And we've looked at the market we want to enter first, and we're looking at uh, food deliveries and recipe kit delivery services. I think they're invented around this region as well. Uh, it's a booming market. Often some of them are still using polystyrene as well. So we've been talking to customers in the UK, um, thinking more small about butchers and farms as well, uh, showing that our product keeps their items cold for as long, if not longer, than their current solutions. We now need to convert these trials into paid revenue, and that's been done at the moment as we're working on our costing. Um, at the moment, um, it's a bit inefficient as a startup, but we've got our costs to a certain level where we're slightly more expensive than the polystyrene solution they're using, but we think as we scale and grow, um, those costs will come down as we get um, uh, economics of scale. I'd just like to point out that doing 250 tons is a quarter of the UK's output per week, and that will let us do many different customers in the UK. So there's plenty of potential. Um, and who are we? Well, I'm Ryan. I'm handling the commercial side of the business. Uh, I have a PhD from Imperial College. My co-founder, Eleanor, actually is doing a PhD in feathers, which is unusual, um, at Imperial. Um, we're a small team, but beyond that, we've got experts involved in textile manufacturing, um, cold shade packaging from uh, GSK, and importantly, former members of the World Rendering Organization, and they were the ones who took the feathers previously, and he's our, our important link to the poultry world. We're sponsored and, and supported by various networks, and through awards we've won, um, we've raised about £200,000 at the moment, and this lets us kind of self-fund for another year. We're going to get this right and then launch our product, securing our first direct customers. Um, but then the plan is, obviously, as I said, to scale, working with packaging suppliers to access distribution, uh, and then mass production will begin in a few years' time. So thanks to Feathers, we have Plumo. And Plumo can now, in a more sustainable manner, generate value right across the chain, from the poultry industry, to the customers and the delivery services, to the end users, and have an improved end of life, all thanks to Feathers. Uh, we don't want to stop there, though. The, long, the big picture is a you know, magical bit of kit that goes into the poultry industry. In go feathers, out comes valuable material. We then license that technology out globally, enabling the sustainable manufacturing of uh, um, uh, local manufacturing of sustainable materials wherever they are in the world, as long as there are feathers. Thank you. Um, uh, another good, another good pitch. Um, I, um, funnily enough, I'm an investor in one of your target customers, uh, Gusto, um, and they currently use wool, um, uh, sort of raw wool. Um, in what way is your feather solution better than the wool solution? Uh, I'm debating what, what I say right now, but I'm going to say we've talked to Gusto, um, and it went very well. Um, this outperforms the, the wool in terms of thermal performance. Um, at the moment, just because we're so small, the price unfortunately wasn't right for them, and I couldn't guarantee them a price long term. And that's what the sticking point was. But they love the product, um, it works really well. So I think we've got the beating of the wool, and that's what we're trying to do as well. And in terms of you know, material available, this, there's far more feathers. So, and, and looking at kind of competition or competitive products, so how much 
are you kind of better? So once in on the cost side, because I think it's important, sure. you know, that you're not more expensive than the other solutions. And then if you think about the benefit where you say, hey, kind of I'm like after 40 minutes, my products are, I think, one degree kind of cooler than, yeah. than with the other solutions. Is that really kind of game changing? Because, you know, one degree feels like so not so much. It's not. It, it's also it, they care about the time and the time to pass the critical limit of this is not safe anymore. And if you're using some of the, the more uh, basic items, then this has got many hours over that. Unfortunately, polystyrene is very good at what it does. However, um, this at least matches that. Where you get, we think at scale, we can beat the polystyrene. But also importantly, polystyrene boxes um, are quite a hassle to receive. You've got a lot of dead space, which is something that customers don't want. They would love to use a more flat pack solution. It's not for everyone, but there are other benefits as well. So um, I'm thinking about this um, ability to take the, the company to the next level. So let's assume that you know, one of us here would be from IKEA and we would be talking about. So how do you ramp this up? What is really your true capability to ramp the production up? Another side story. We tried to get to the, into the IKEA accelerator and they said, very good, but unfortunately, probably not going to use any more feathers. So that was very sad to hear. Um, so I think the way we ramp this up is we're doing a lot of our hard work at the moment ourselves, but we know we need to partner with the right people, especially in terms of like the packaging side. This is an area we need, we need more expertise in. But we have um, now in discussions with uh, pretty much the major uh, poultry supplier in the world. Um, they're based in, also got arm in the UK. We engage with them at the R&D level, and it's been bumped up to the chain now to the kind of the head of innovation, and they want to push this project forward and figure out, at scale, how do you receive waste chicken feathers, thousands of tons a week, uh, and they are desperate. That industry is desperate to find value out of these feathers. They're paying to get rid of them at the moment, and I receive emails about once a month from all around the world saying, can I buy your, your factory? Can I buy this? And I'm, I'm saying, no, I'm just a guy with um, some materials. So, yeah, not at the moment, yeah. Can I get a close-up on oh, the materials? Oh, I was materials? going to pass it over. I didn't want Not to, to go two dragons den on the whole thing. I was going to bring <laughs> loads and throw them out, but uh, we kind of need them. Have a feel. <clears throat> How important to you is the look and feel? I guess for the Gausto or HelloFresh experience, it has to look natural. Yeah, yeah. yeah Does that uh, matter? Or actually most 99% of this market is industrial and it's uh, um, it doesn't matter how it looks? We targeted this kind of higher-end food delivery uh, industry because it's slightly easier to access if you get the messaging right. So things about the branding, that's why we kind of spent a while thinking up the name that sort of fits and the look of the item, there will be some branding on it, but we started with a, I'm not going to scroll through it all, but we started with a plastic liner and it just didn't look right. Um, this is a starch-based biodegradable one. Um, so yeah, the look and feel of this product is going to be quite important. And it's part of the reason we want to keep lean and small ourselves because we know there's a lot of work to be done about iteration. And if we just go to the big boys instantly, they sort of don't like it. It's dropped. That might be our one chance gone. So we're going to grind it out for a little bit longer. So how much is that piece if I buy it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you were to buy the wool-based equivalent, that's probably coming in at something like uh, a pound something, one pound 50. And ours is probably coming in about one pound 80 right this second. But we're we're sending material all over the place, so we really think that can match that at least and, and, and be competitive. Thank you.